In this week's running video, we're going to discuss how a high arch can influence certain types of overuse injuries in runners, a self-test that you can use to help identify if you have a high arch and if you should use something like an orthotic to help support it, and then we're going to go through some exercises that you can start doing to improve the mobility around your arch. Okay, so first we're just going to talk about what a high arch is and is it something that you have to be concerned about. So the, the arch that we're talking about in this video is a very high arch, rigid foot that has very limited mobility. And we're going to go through some self tests that you can look at to see if you fall into this category. But the reason why we want to identify this is that sometimes runners are experiencing uh, these overuse injuries year after year and it follows a particular pattern. So when people have a high arch, what happens is, is that they have a hard time actually getting through towards their big toe on the inside portion of the arch. So they're not getting good shock absorption. So many people have heard of the term over pronation, but these individuals, they actually under pronate. So they're under pronators. We need to encourage a little bit more motion at the ankle, at the um, uh, arch to allow for absorption of force more effectively. So when the arch is high, it's rigid, that what happens is the weight of the body stays more on the outer part of the foot. So this causes excessive loading through the outer part of the, the toes, the metatarsals, the lower leg, up through the knee and into the hip. So common overuse injuries that these runners uh, will experience are gonna be anything from metatarsalgia on the outer part of the metatarsals, peroneal tendinopathy, IT band syndrome, and hip pain. So this is an important area for runners who just keep experiencing those types of symptoms. So a very simple test that you can do for yourself to see if you need to work on some of your mobility and improve some of the arch flexibility is just a simple stance test. So all you're gonna do is stand with your feet firmly planted in the ground. Try to keep a tri tripod posture. So keep weight in your heel, your big toe, and then out towards your little toes. So just try to find some balance with that. And then you're gonna push firmly into the ground. And then from here, you're going to start rotating side to side. And this is very helpful if you just actually record yourself doing it. So set up a camera on the ground so you can then look at what your arches are doing after you do this test. So you just go back and forth, back and forth. As you get a little more used to it, you can then get a little bit more speed behind it, a little bit more momentum so you can see what the arches are doing. So with this test, and you go back and look at your video, we want to look at a few things. So we want to see how the arches are moving from side to side. When we rotate and we are taking our limbs into internal and external rotation, we want to be able to see the foot collapse down a little bit through the arch. And then when we rotate the opposite way in the external rotation, we want to see the arch come back up. So that would be more of a normal shock absorption pattern for the arch. People who under pronate or have very high arches, they're going to have very limited motion or very limited um, absorption through that arch um, when we go into internal rotation. So if you see that in the video, then these exercises that we're going to be going over are likely going to benefit you. Now, in some rare cases, I've probably seen maybe three of these in the 12 years that I've been treating runners is that you might see people with high arches and when they do this test, they actually go from a very high arch and they come all the way down to the ground, all the way up, all the way down. And when you actually examine the foot, they have a lot of flexibility through their foot. So now these are gonna be individuals who actually have high arches and they might benefit from using a orthotic or something to help um, control that amount of motion because they are uh, pronating too much and it's uncontrolled. So those individuals are likely going to need some sort of orthotic, uh, whether it's custom or just one off the shelf to help absorb some of the excessive motions going through the foot. But if you do identify that you are having limited motion, 
then an orthotic actually is not likely going to help you. And we hear this a lot that when people have very high arches that they might even just say just because they read something or they were told by a friend, whatever it is that, oh, I know I have high arches, I really should use arch supports. And it's like, well, no, not necessarily. Because again, we need the arch to absorb some of the ground reaction force during running. So if you have a very rigid arch and you have trouble getting through into more pronation to absorb that shock, then if you have a um, arch support that's pushing up into the arch so then it literally can't move into that range of motion now, you're just making the problem worse. So many people will still experience the same amount of symptoms or even worsening symptoms because now any motion that they did have is being completely negated by the orthotic and just keeps their weight more on the outside part of their foot, putting more strain through the outer foot, outer lower leg, knee, and hip. What are some exercises that you can do to start working on this? So we're gonna go through a handful of exercises, start working on some mobility. And when you're doing these exercises, you want to go through the motions, but you also wanna just get a feel for what it feels like to have a little bit of rotation through the lower leg, um, what it feels like to have your arch lengthen a little bit. And the more you can get that feeling down, then you're gonna be able to make it click a little bit more while you're actually running. So the first set of exercises we're gonna do on the ground, for this example, we're gonna, I'm gonna use my left, left foot and just keeping the knee over the ankle and trying to keep pressure between the pinky, big toe, heel. And from here, all you're gonna do is just rock forward and you're gonna rock backwards. So when you're rocking forward, maintain that pressure through the big toe, try to feel your weight come over into the inside part of your arch and just think about pressing down to lengthen the arch. And then you're gonna come back up. And when you come back with the knee, you're gonna see the arch pop up and then you go back down. Now, if you have a very stiff arch, you might see very limited motion doing this and that's okay. You're just gonna start working at it and just try to get as much motion as you can in and out. Now, something that you can use to help get a little bit more motion out of it is when our knee's coming forward and we're getting some pronation, we need a little bit of internal rotation through the lower leg. So what you can do with your hands is actually grab onto the lower leg and as you're going forward, try to just twist and then bring it back out. So you're trying to twist inwards, trying to again, flatten out that arch and you'll just go in and out. So you'll do this about 20 times or so. Now, one other thing that you can try, if again, you're not seeing too much motion, not feeling too much of a lengthening in the arch, you can use just a hand towel and fold it in half, maybe a couple more times, just to give you a little bit of a prop. And you're gonna put this on the outer part of your foot so then it actually will allow your big toe to come down a little further and it will really cause more pronation through this whole area and you do the same drill. So you're just gonna lean forward and trying to just press through the big toe, trying to lengthen through here in and out about 20 times. So if you feel a nice little stretch or some lengthening with the towel there, then this can be a good option for you. Okay, so now the next series we're gonna do in a standing position and we're gonna use our body weight to take us in and out of pronation, supination, and just trying to go um, between those nice and easy. So I'm gonna keep my foot planted, pinky, big toe, heel, and I'm gonna step back and out this way. So when I do that, I'm gonna get some internal rotation going in my, my lower extremity pressing down through my arch and trying to put a little bit of pressure through the big toe and that inside part of the arch. And then I'm gonna step out this way and lean back like so, and I'm gonna let the arch come up. And I'm gonna step back this way. So again, internal rotation, pressing down through the arch, stepping out this way, getting some external rotation, letting the arch pop up. And I'm gonna go in and out of this position. 
and you can play around with the angles a little bit. You can step maybe further back this way. You can step further forward. As long as you're just working on the goal of trying to go in and out of pronation and then supination. And again, you do this about 20 to 30 times or so. Okay. So now this next exercise, I'm actually gonna use a band to help encourage more muscle activation through the inner part of the arch while we go through a little bit of a balanced drill. So you just need to anchor a band to something about knee height or so, and I'm gonna pull it out towards the big toe. And when you do this, you don't want it across the whole foot. We're just trying to get the big toe to stay really engaged. So I'm just putting it underneath this first um, metatarsal phalangeal joint. So from this position, I have to push really firmly down through my big toe. I can already feel my arch engaging, but I'm also still feeling the pinky and the heel on the ground. So a nice tripod stance. And then from here, I'm gonna do what's called a kickstand or a B-stance deadlift. So from here, this foot is just giving me a little bit of balance. And then I'm going to shift through my hip and I'm gonna come back up. So I'm just trying to bring some awareness to the foot inside part of the arch and getting my glute max working and hamstrings. So I'm just gonna go in and out of this position. And then for a little bit more of a challenge, then you can go into a um, full single leg deadlift to where this leg's gonna come back, keeping the pressure through the big toe, keeping the hips square to the ground in front of you. You're not rotating off of it. It's a little bit more challenging, like I said. And then coming back to the starting point. And right now, my arch is burning, my lower leg muscles are burning. Just trying to get the entire limb to communicate with each other. Okay. All right, and the final exercise is just getting used to what it feels like to actually move and get your weight through the inside part of your arch. So just first by uh, just taking some steps, just really focus on coming down landing and then just pressing through your big toe so it's really slowing it down and just getting a feel for letting your weight shift through big toe and if you're having a hard time getting into the big toe or you just can't feel that that awareness that weight shift then you can just put yourself in that position so this time actually lift the little toes off the ground and just take some small steps like that and just trying to see what it feels like to get onto the inside part of your arch. You can walk forward, you can walk backwards. And then after you do that for 20, 30 steps, then try going back to regular walking, trying to push through the big toe, okay? So that's just trying to, again, build that awareness while you're actually moving, something that's gonna be a little bit more applicable to running. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Gave you some things to work on if you are dealing with a real high stiff arch or if you've been dealing with these overuse injuries that are affecting the outer part of your limb then this could be a, a reason why if you have any questions at all please comment in the section below i'm happy to answer your questions if you have any other thoughts or ideas on any other content you'd like to see uh, please leave that in the comment section as well because we're always looking for new content to make and i want to make it a little bit more individual for the viewers who are watching our channel so if you take a second to do that, it's greatly appreciated. So until the next video, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.